Welcome back everybody to the Cowboy Slot channel. My name is Brantley. And I'm Mark. And today we are at IGT showroom in Las Vegas and we're doing a very special interview with not only a vice president, but the person that is behind the scenes of our favorite games who helped develop pinball and top dollar. Right, Mark? That's right. And I, guys, you're going to just love this interview. And we even asked him what was his favorite pinball and top dollar. So make sure you watch to the end because it's pretty exciting. A lot of good stuff in this video, guys. So let's get going. You ready to jump into it? Let's jump I'm into ready. It. We have so much good information in this video, guys. Tons of good stuff. We're asking all of those common questions straight from an actual programmer. This is the person that's done the math, has designed the games, and is the brains behind it. So without further ado, here we go. <music> Welcome back everybody to the Cowboy Slot Channel. My name is Brantley and I am here with Mark. Today we are at IGT's showroom in Las Vegas and we are joined by Anthony Berlocker. He's a vice president here with IGT and we're going to ask him some of those very important questions about slot machines. Anthony, welcome to the show. Well, so great you. to have you here. It's great to be here. Uh, absolute pleasure. First time doing this and uh, looking forward to what you have in store. Awesome. awesome. Uh, Mark's going to get us started here with the first question. All right, uh, so, good. Mark, you want to take it away and ask the first question for Anthony? I sure will. So, Anthony, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been with uh, IGT? What are some of your famous projects that you've worked on? And uh, what is your role here? What kind of teams do you work with? Those kinds of things. Uh, great. Long answer. I, I know. Can go. I, I asked you like five I'm, questions. I'm, I'm sorry. See all these gray hairs? Take them one uh, at a time. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> So I, I started in the industry about 30 years ago with IGT. Uh, I took a break from IGT uh, and did my own thing, went to a competitor and came back to IGT about five years ago. So I started out as a mathematician, uh, as an intern, believe it or not, do a, hired to do poker pay tables, but that quickly evolved into game design on the slot side. So one of my first projects that was a big hit was the original Wheel of Fortune games. And I designed most of the Wheel of Fortune games for probably the first 10 years of that brand that's now 25 years old, uh, which happened last year and made me feel really old. But <laughs> it's, uh, there are people like, God, could you imagine being around 25 years ago when this thing launched? Yeah. Yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very easy for you. Uh, it, so, yeah. so that was one of my big ones. I worked on the Game King, putting the first Game King package together. Uh, that was a challenge in that multi-game. Uh, the Barcrest series, so Top Dollar and Pinball, heavily involved in that, did the math and worked with the, the Barcrest company, which we could talk about a little bit later, hopefully, um, on that. And uh, done a series of video slots, uh, was sort of, that we call them iGames, where IGT's first range of video slots, so like Cleopatra, uh, Coyote Moon, Texas T, Little Green Men, um, <clears throat> Stinkin' Rich, a whole whole bunch of those. Uh, were under my watch. So it, my roles evolved and now I'm on the product side. So I came back and what product is, we own the, the P&L. So the, in charge of profit and losses for, for the mechanical real business is one of them. So the S2000, S3000, and now we just launched the Diamond RS, really proud of that. So uh, oversee that whole business. Uh, I also have the hardware strategy for our, our global gaming and as well as our foundation, our, our gaming software platform. So I don't actually do the, the coding or the engineering side, but oversee the strategy and the product management of that. And then I have, uh, I still get it, my math nature, I get to geek out a little bit. And I have a advanced research team that's focused on data analytics. So I, when I need a break from the <laughs> business world, I get to go back to my little uh, true nature of math, uh, get to play around with that. So it's a lot of fun. Keeping me busy. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, thank you so much, Anthony. So the general public is becoming more aware of the term volatility. Can you explain to uh, the players out there just exactly what volatility is? Does it exist? And and how can they? How does that really affect somebody's gameplay when they're playing a slot machine? Great question, and it's a it's a complex answer that we we debate amongst ourselves here at IGT. Uh, it is extremely important. It does exist. And it, it impacts the design of the game and as a player, what you actually experience when you're playing the game. It depends on like how 
good are my chances of hitting a bonus? Uh, what's the likelihood of hitting a jackpot that I expect based on my bankroll? Uh, there's some extreme events that can actually change the volatility quite dramatically. For example, Megabucks is our most volatile game because of that 10 to $20 million jackpot that most people don't experience. You know, if you played Megabucks, you're most likely ne never hit it. So we kind of have to almost exclude those outlying events when we talk about the true volatility or what I like to call the session volatility, that is what you experience in that 10 to 15 minutes that you play a game within a session. So, you know, these guys are great. I've watched a bunch of their videos and trust me, they, they know what they're talking about. But Brantley said something that I want to discuss that relates to volatility. Um, Pinball is one of my favorite games, you know, working on it. And I know it's Brantley's favorite Definitely game. Favorite and, of mine. Um, I like the new one. I like the double gold pinball. Oh, here, we go. See, here, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and and Brantley says he doesn't like it as much because it's more volatile than the original, right? Do, do you agree? Yeah, you that? I, I would agree. But you explained to me earlier that it's it's a smoother ride along the way to get there. But you were absolutely correct when you said because it's pushing that ten dollar bet, it feels you know it it's more volatile. You know, from the pure mathematical calculation, the OG pinball, the original one, is more volatile. Really? I, I have the numbers to prove it. Okay. <laughs> but because of the size of the bet, the size of the bonus, the frequency of the bonus, the you know how likely you are within a certain bankroll, the same bankroll, you're more likely to hit a bonus on the original potential. So that even though the calculation is less volatile, it can actually feel more volatile depending on how you play and what your bankroll is. So it, it's an interesting topic. It definitely exists. Uh, and, and it's one of the key factors in how we design the game. So the trend, I hear a lot of people say, higher volatility. We like higher volatility. Players like higher volatility. I don't necessarily subscribe to that because I believe players actually create their own volatility based on what your bankroll is and how much you're betting. If I'm betting, for example, say I walk into a casino with $100, that's my bankroll. If I play a $10 slot machine, I have, I could lose 10 games in a row. I didn't experience the whole game, but I'm like, man, this game's volatile. I, I'm done in a minute. Versus if I'm playing 50 cents, now I have 200 bets and I'm more likely to hit something. So it's, it's a really interesting dynamic, uh, something hotly debated. There is no perfect answer. And I think for every player, what they want in volatility is different. So when you're talking about, that's a very good explanation. Um, let's take, let's compare like two games. Let's say top dollar, original top dollar and original pinball. Yes. So bonus frequency, a little bit more frequent on regular top dollar than pinball. That is correct. But the average bonus round payout is also lower on original top dollar than that is also pinball. correct. So that is basically like the risk reward factor that you're really looking at there when you think about is that volatility also where you're like top dollar you probably expect expect to get the bonus a little bit more frequently but the trade-off is is that the bonus rounds are not going to be as consistent or higher like they typically are on pinball i would say that's absolutely correct as a general rule but even within a game there's we can create different volatilities so the base game may have one volatility and the bonus game could have a totally different volatility so in, in top dollar, it's a pretty low volatility bonus. Like you're you're kind of always on the say the the three coin version, getting that twenty five to fifty credit offer. You know the most of them fall in there, but every now and then you pop it for a couple hundred, right? So those ones create a little bit more volatility, but overall it's a pretty low volatility bonus. Uh, pinball's a little bit more volatile, but it's really not that volatile either. Like you, there's usually a general range, but again, every now and then you get a couple of those hundreds or you fill it, start filling up the, ch I saw you fill up the chamber. That <laughs> one. Holy cow, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, so, so th those events do happen, but again, if pinball feels a little bit more volatile because it takes longer to get to the bonus, um, there's a little more RTP in the bonus, but then when you get that bonus, even though it's, the volatility range is a little bit bigger, but it pays more, so it feels like it's even more volatile than it really is. 
it, again, the mathematical calculation versus what you experience as a player, not necessarily the same thing. All right, Anthony, next question is about what casinos can do to set a payback percentage on a slot machine. Uh, it's my understanding that they do have the ability to do that. Manufacturer provides certain ranges, jurisdictions, and all that that allow certain ranges to be set. But can they take it a step further and say, we want this machine to pay out at certain times of the day or certain weekends, or let's say when somebody puts their player's card in, can they start saying that person needs to start losing? Is there anything like that built into slot machines? No, abs absolutely not. <clears throat> uh, as you said, there are is a range of percentages that's designed into the game. So it might be 95% payback to the player or 90%. Uh, that's up to the manufacturer. It's up to the producer and the designer of the game and to define exactly what that range is. And there may be as few as three or there might be as many as 10, uh, depending on the game. But the operator can pick what they want that to be. So that's over the life of this machine it's going to happen. Right At that point, the game's sort of locked down and it operates. Uh, there's no outside influence that can go into the game. They can't pick a time, a day, a player. Uh, none of that happens. The game operates completely agnostic uh, to who's playing, what time of day it is. It knows what time of day it is, but that has no influence on the random number generator or the outcomes or any of that. So it's truly just a pure luck, random chance event. Okay. so. Basically, casinos cannot monkey with machines to say, start doing this. No, okay. there's no way for a casino to do that. So is there or have you ever heard of a slot machine that is intentionally programmed to give a win within a certain number of spins or uh, at a certain time or uh, X amount of increments, anything like that? Uh, basically, no, that, that's not really realistic. That's not how games are designed. Um, if there is something, it's clearly displayed in the game rules or on the screen. So, for instance, like a game like Scarab uh, doesn't guarantee a win, but like it's a 10 game cycle where you're collecting things that can turn wild. So that that's like as close as I could think of, uh, you know, and again, it's it, that last spins completely random. The, the 10 spins leading up to it on where you get the wilds are random. Um, but, you know, th there might be some games that have a little cycle of an event, but. No, it's not. There's nothing to kind of say, oh, this person's losing. Let's give them a, a pay or, oh, this person's winning. Let's not give them pays. None of that happens. Every game is completely independent of, of every other game. And that's by regulation rule. And we live by it. Uh, we're, we're very conscious of the rules and regulations. Everything is tested by an independent lab. Uh, we could potentially lose our gaming license if we got caught doing something like that. And trust me, it is not worth it. No. <laughs> so um, kind of just to add on that and build on that, can casinos make their own program or put their own program on a? Can they alter a slot machine to say, oh, we want to give a certain number of wins and a certain number of places? No, there, there's no way they could do that. Uh, our platforms are very uh, secure. They're also designed just so with our, our own programs are the only ones who will work with it. Uh, if they tried to hack into it, they, they could lose their gaming license as well. And there's regulatory bodies that go around and check the machines. Everything has secure, secure keys, tape, you name it on there. There's no way a, a property could ever go in and modify the games. All right, Anthony. So when a slot machine is set at a certain payback percentage, can you describe basically how does it balance out over the life of that machine like how does it actually get to that number sure this is uh pure math and this <clears throat> this is where i i love this stuff so everything is random and when you things are random they fall into a normal distribution so there, that's a bell curve you may have heard the term bell curve so there's events that are rare on one side that'd be like the game not paying out there's rare events on the other side that's where it pays out a lot. And then there's the majority, which is it kind of pays like it's supposed to. Uh, <clears throat> but again, these are over millions and millions of games that it will eventually converge to its expected payout. So if I look at a game over the life of its time, um, and again, Megabucks could be an exception, could, whether it hits or not, 
it's gonna if it's designed to pay out 95 percent it will be you know 94.8 to 95.2 but on any month any week um it could be 10 percent payout it could be 250 percent payout uh but it's there's this mathematical law that uh sounds really stupid but it, it's 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 real name is called the law of large numbers and it basically says through randomness eventually when you have a large enough number they all eventually come to what it's supposed to be but any of the you take any of those sub segments they could be all over the place um so you you may have heard <clears throat> the term confidence range so like we mathematically will use a 90 percent confidence range so that means over x number of games we can calculate with 90 percent accuracy or confidence that it's going to pay between this range so a 95 percent game after a hundred thousand games maybe it could be between with 90 percent confidence 88 percent or it might be 102 percent um but that's only 90 percent so that means 10 percent of the time it's going to be outside of even that range so again i again a little technical here but it, it it's it i love this stuff right i i really get into it, 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 it. it's fascinating to see but um yeah eventually over the life of a machine it comes pretty close to where uh the the math is designed to eventually pay out and that's why you know casinos we get calls all the time your game's broke it's paying out 150 percent you know it's like what's wrong with it? it's like well give it time give it time it will come back that doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow you just kind of have to wait it's funny because the casinos never call when it's on the other end. Right. They only, they only, <laughs> funny, they only call when it's paying out too much. Right, right. Uh, great answer. Um, so the one thing, I guess what people under, don't understand, I guess with balancing is that, let's say that it is way up there, 150%. Does the, does the programming of the machine say, oh, I better start backing off a little bit because it's way up there? Or does it just continue to play out exactly like it was always designed to play out, like the math, like you were saying? Yeah, no, it 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 forgets everything it's done in the past and just goes forward. It's just uh, again, the mathematical rules over a long term, it will eventually come back. But even though it's been paying out, it can continue to pay out. Uh, that that's has to happen, or else it's not random. So based on these past couple of questions, can you walk us through just exactly what happens when a player pushes that button or pulls that handle? What what happens behind the scenes? Okay, I'll, I'll try to do this again, kind of a, a short answer. Um, but lo lots of things are actually going on, uh, but none of them really are designed to change the game. It, it's just the way the games work. So even before you hit the button, the random number generator is cycling, cycling, cycling. So it's out there, it never stops. Um, and that's how we actually get the randomness out of it. As soon as you hit that button, um, it starts pulling a random number or multiple random numbers. And, and this has kind of changed over time. So like when I started in the industry, you say a three real slot machine, and I S2, S plus back then, um, you guys remember us? You got us pluses, oh, we, right? Got, yeah. So, so uh, at that time, it would pull one random number to stop the first reel. After that first reel stopped, it would pull a second random number to stop the second reel, and then pull a third random number to stop the third reel. And then we do an evaluation of those stops. They're completely independent of each other. Um, <clears throat> at that time, we say, okay, what's the symbols on the pay lines on reel one, two, three? The, the game processor evaluates it and says, okay, you won this combination and it pays this much, or you lost. And then it, the game then goes on and pays it out. Like I said, the only real difference in today's game is it might pull all those random numbers up front. So like, if you think about how you can fast bang a game and do speed stops, we have to have all those random numbers for the reels pulled before the player can do that uh, so that they're allowed to. So, th so really the only shift has been pulling all the random numbers up front versus doing it uh, sequentially after game events happen. So Anthony, you mentioned this, uh, you just mentioned this in your answer, fast stopping the reels. We get this question all the time. Does fast stopping the reels really truly affect the game? Oh, I wish it did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I had some control, but no, no. Once it pulls those random numbers, 
you're going to get the exact same outcome whether you hit the button if you wait for the first two reels to stop and hit the button or if you just let it play out uh, that that the game's already made that determination independently for each reel completely random uh, but yeah it really doesn't influence the game other than it changes the timing of when you start the next game so it could affect the outcome of the next game because you'd hit the button at a different time like i said yeah um I think I've heard you guys talk about the fallacy of stealing jackpots. Yeah. Right. You know, it, it, could it happen? Possibly, but you'd have to hit it at that exact same microsecond. Because uh, that, R, as I mentioned earlier, the RNG is continually flowing. So it's, uh, there's really nothing you can do. The games have to be random. They have to be independent of player input and skill. And everything's independent of each other. All right, Anthony. So we get this question a lot too. Is there any way to tell just by looking at a slot machine or maybe spinning it a couple times to determine if it's in some kind of paying cycle and a lot of people say hot or cold is there any way to tell probably the easiest thing to do is see if i'm sitting in front of the machine then you know it's in a cold cycle because <laughs> <laughs> i am not good at slots believe it or not right. no but no there there's no such thing as hot and cold as designed by the game i mean yeah games have a series of wins or a game can go into a drought Again, that's part of randomness. It, those things have to happen or else the game's not random. You know, but, but there's absolutely no such thing as a game-controlled hot streak or cold streak. It, it just kind of feels that way sometimes. So we have a lot of players in all different states and jurisdictions out there. Is there any way to tell if a slot machine is class two if they might not see a bingo card on the screen? Yeah, that's an interesting question, and uh, it depends on the market, right? Because, and actually even the casinos and even the the manufacturer, some people like to advertise this as bingo. So you see those big bingo cards like you just mentioned on the balls, and it's like, this is a bingo game, and players like to look for patterns. Uh, other markets and other casinos and other vendors like try to make it look more like a slot machine, and quite honestly, sometimes I walk through casinos going, I know they have class two in here. Where are they? Uh, so, so the easiest thing to do is actually go to the help screens and the and see at the pay tables. And if you after you get through the the slot symbols and what they pay, if there's a whole bunch of bingo patterns, then you know it's class two. So, so what I normally would do is it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes you got to go into the the pay screens and look for those bingo patterns. So, Mark and I need to settle a debate. We got to know. Which do you like more, pinball or top dollar? <laughs> oh, man. Pressure is on. <laughs> uh, now, you designed both of them, right? I did. So I designed both this... of them along with, with our partners at Barcrest. So I, I did the math and the game design and actually worked on getting the relationship with with the people at Barcrest who are amazing people to work with. Um, the The truth is, the reason the whole Barcrest deal happened was because of pinball. Uh, I so, win. No, hey, well, I'm not done hey, yet. Not this done is a long no, answer. We... <laughs> <laughs> this is a nuanced answer because I got, he's gonna say I, got I got my two children on picking the right? longest way possible to say both. <laughs> yeah. Say. All right. Absolutely. So, uh, you, Mark, you did a great, like, the history of, of uh, Barcrest oh, okay. video a little bit. Something you didn't know was the original Barcrest game was called Bagatelle. Oh, okay. Really? And it was an, a game from Barcrest that was over in the UK. And uh, <clears throat> I actually saw that game and we started talking as I was captivated by Bagatelle. And that was kind of one of the reasons we got together and did the joint venture of Barcrest and IGT. And to suit the American market, we're like, no one knows what Bagatelle is. Right. Uh, so, so let's call it pinball. So I ha have a super affinity to that. But honestly, my favorite one would be Top Dollar. Oh, <laughs> all right. And, but let me explain right. why. <laughs> uh, top Dollar was the first offer acceptance game in the industry, yeah. right? Where you, you, you're given that offer and now you got, what do I do? What do I don't do? The reason I'm a little more passionate towards it is because the math behind it was so challenging mm. to figure that out. No one had ever done this before. And there's a gentleman, Pete Girard, at Barcrest. Uh, the two of us were working on it, and we're like, how do we calculate this? And we were back and forth for a couple of weeks, and finally, like, it clicked in my mind how, how to actually do the calculations. And then we, we kind of proved it out. So 
just because of the challenge in the design, uh, it has a special place in my heart. But then I was also really scared about the game. Because again, it's the first game where like, someone's gonna have $50 on the machine and they're gonna have to decide if they want that or not. And I just like, are, are players gonna go for this? Are they gonna like this? And I went, um, was working with the Bellagio when they were opening and the Tom Miklich who was opening the floor for the casino, he looked at that game, he's like, this game's gonna hit it. Like this, this is what my players are gonna want. They're gonna want that big win and then that stress of, oh, <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. And I'm like, Tom, are you sure? He's like, no, we're, we're, and he ordered a whole bunch of them and the rest is history. He was right wow. and I was scared for no reason. That is awesome. What great story. All right. So no, top dollar. Mic. <laughs> top dollar is the favorite. Okay. I, I have to I mean, we obviously we love both games. Um Me I've too. always I think for top dollar is exactly the reason I like it is exactly what you described. Um it's one of the very few it was for a long time, um, uh, where you had control over your fate, which was unheard of in slot machines. And so yeah, it's it really is a test to your greed. How greedy <laughs> are you to go to that next level? But it's also one of those ones where you really have to be pretty educated on that game to yes, know when to accept and not to accept. And, you know, it does give the advice, of course. Um, but it's one of those that we always say, play it for a while. And then you'll start to kind of feel out when you need to stop and take that yeah. offer. And I think because of that, it's just, it's really exciting. It is. And it, it, it is super fun. Um, it's exciting. Every, every button press is exciting. You don't know what to do. And, and sometimes when you know you should take it, you're still like, oh, but I want to see what, what's there. Uh, you know, some, something I want to just clarify for, for all your viewers is we do give guidance, right? And that is a mathematically correct decision over the long term, right? It does not mean that it's the right it's going to give you the biggest win on this game. Right. Um, so, so there's a little bit, you know, people like, oh, the machine lied to me. <laughs> so, like, yes. We hear that <laughs> no, all the time. It, yeah. it didn't, it, it's not telling you what to do. It's just saying if you're going to play Based this game on. again and again, it's right. the right thing to do. It's, it's kind of like in, in video poker, you're dealt a full house. And the best play is to hold that full house. But it's like, I'm going to throw away the, the, the small pair. And you draw that four of a kind and you're like, see, the machine told me I should have held the full house. And like, well, if you get dealt that a bunch of times on the long run, you're going to make the most money holding the full house. So it, it's a very similar situation. It's not always telling you the right answer. It's telling you the best answer. Right. All right. So the question I have, and this is something Brantley and I talked about. What if you create now? So you're, you're the VP of product. So this is the one chance that I'm going to get to, to have a suggestion here. What if you combine the two together? Ooh, ooh. And you had pinball and top dollar in the same thing, and you get the pinball bonus, and then you decide whether you want to try again or not. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. I'll take Anything's it. Possible. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, it. maybe I get you a job application. Huh? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, Anthony. So uh, one of the questions we do get a lot too is about tournament mode. So people who've played in slot tournaments or maybe watched them before, um, they notice that wow, they get double diamonds and triple diamonds and double, double seven and just all the time. You know, is that possible to put on the regular casino floor? Like, is there some kind of switch the casino can say, put this machine in tournament mode and let people play like that? Not easily. So, so tournament mode is a marketing event. It is not a gambling event. So that, that's the first thing. The machine is set up with a special pay table and it, it, they can't just flip the switch and turn that on. It, it goes through a whole process to enable this special pay table. That is a high payout pay table because you're playing for points. You're not playing for money. You know, the, the machine won't take any money. There's no bill acceptor. There's no ticket printer. Uh, you know, you can, some places you can register with your card, but uh, the game itself, while it, the pay table structure looks the same, the symbols look the same, uh, it, it's a whole different pay table because you're not playing for money. So we do, like if you were, I don't know the exact numbers and it changes from game to game, but it might be a thousand percent return, for example, because we, we want to make it exciting, right? Tournaments should be fun. You know, you want to be seeing that meter scroll 
So you know, we will have a lot of double diamond symbols, 5X wild symbols, whatever the game is, come in. So yeah, tournaments are a lot of fun, but keep in mind they're not gambling. They're promotional games where you're competing against other people to see who can get the most points. So Anthony, obviously the industry has changed so much recently. We see so many new video games coming out and all these you know crazy games. Do you feel that the classic three reel slots are here to stay and how will they evolve into the future? Yeah, well, I hope so since that's my job. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, uh, th there's been a rejuvenation in the classic three reel slots. Uh, there's a, a lot of momentum in the industry right now for, I think, a couple reasons. One is there's a lot of new people coming to the casinos, especially after COVID. It was like uh, the casinos were the first places to open. So a lot of new people came in. And the video slots, uh, when I talk to people and they say, what do you do? Oh, I work at IGT. I make slot machines. Like, oh, they're so complicated. I don't understand them. There's all these lines and like, I don't know what's going on. A three reel slot is simple to start. So it's a great starter game, but the manufacturers have done a really good job over the past few years creating new concepts and actually evolving it to uh, 2020s, uh, what players, what, what the 2020 player wants uh, from a, a map ride, the symbols, the pay lines, the volatility, the jackpots. So uh, they've come a long way over the last five years and uh, it's trending up. When I talk to casino operators, they a lot of times says, yeah, we, we went too far and go into video. We need to bring back some more mechanical reels. So it, it's definitely a trend and I don't see that stopping. Um, there's a lot of momentum and uh, the big manufacturers are all focused on it. One thing that I really have to say is of all the slot manufacturers and all the game makers, I have to give props and applaud IGT because you guys have done such a phenomenal job of retaining those classic games and bringing them back with the new Diamond RS cabinet has just been absolutely incredible. So thank you for for doing that and for keeping those classic games alive. Uh, it's great to hear you say that, and uh, you know the the results we're seeing kind of prove it out too. The players love these games, and I think one of the mistakes is sometimes we out, try to outthink ourselves and do something new and creative when what we have is really good. We just you know need to adapt it a little bit to modernize it and give a little bit different experience. But yeah, I'm a huge, huge advocate of all of our brands, whether it be Wolf Run or Cleopatra, Top Dollar, Double Diamond, et cetera. So um, it's, I appreciate you saying that. And uh, our team put a lot of effort trying to, to keep it true to the original. And people do appreciate that. Oh, they, do. they really do. People do appreciate that. So thank you. All right, Anthony, let's get personal here. What are some of your favorite games that you were able to develop? Yeah, usually there's a backstory behind them. So we, we already talked about Pinball and, and Top Dollar. So those are definitely favorites. Uh, probably the greatest project I ever worked on was the Super Spin Wheel of Fortune. So I don't know if you remember that one, but it was a nine player station, the big shared wheel that spun around with the domes. Um, figuring out how to get the players to be able to share that bonus event from a mathematical standpoint was a lot of fun. Uh, the whole figuring out the size of the machine, um, the watching the, our engineering and technical team figure out uh, how to protect the wheel, how to make the wheel spin, you know, look, testing out different motors to spin that big wheel around. <laughs> uh, a little known fact, the dome over that, to get something that was strong enough yet curved, we didn't use helicopter windshields. Really? Ah, okay. Well, that's cool. Because we couldn't have it had be something that wouldn't break, but was still sturdy enough to curve around. So yeah, I, I seen that project come together was was an amazing thing. Um, my all time favorite game is it's it's again a stupid story behind it that I ever did was double three four five times pay. Um, <clears throat> for a couple reasons, one, it it was actually we have this test bank program we used to run. Uh, where we would test slots against the best IGT slots. So it'd be the double diamond, triple diamond, five times pay. And you'd have to index against those games. Double three for five times pay was the first game to ever hit two times average against our, our best game. So that was like something I was really proud of. But I did that game in a weekend on a challenge. 
Oh, right? wow. So okay. Someone uh, in our product management was like, we haven't had any new good games in a long time. Anthony what, 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 was yelling at me. I said, this was on a Friday. I go, I'll have you one Monday. Awesome. <laughs> and I, like I had this kernel of an idea and I didn't didn't really know. I, I, I wanted it kind of like this, but I was sitting there and Saturday morning, woke up, was sitting in the shower with the water on me and like, boom, the, the vision of the pay table glass came to my head. I got my computer, sat on my floor for a whole week and just banging on a spreadsheet. And next thing you know, I came in Monday and she's like, so did you get the game done? I go, boom, here it is. And here's what it's going to look like. And we got the art team, the, put wow. the math in it. And uh, yeah, so so stupid stories like that is like oh, what, what makes it really a wonderful story. Yeah, so, that's great. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of my favorites. And now if I give you one more, Diamond RS. Uh, sure. This is my coup de grace. Like I, I love this cabinet. We had a great team. We went out and did ethnographic research with our, our research team, which it's it's finding out about the player. So we went out across the country to 30 plus properties, one, walked one on one to find out what players liked about mechanical real slots, why they would play them, why they wouldn't play them, what absolutely turned them off. Brought that back, put it together with a vision, uh, brought forward a bunch of our classic titles, evolved pinball a little bit. Um, you know, and and uh, it's just such a cool cabinet with so much capability with the digital screen, the IGT diamond glass, so we can do the multi-game, uh, change your line configurations. Uh, uh, just really, really proud of it. And, you know, it won the Eilers Best New Slot of the Year Award recently. So awesome. that was an, another yeah. uh, huge, huge accomplishment for the team. So, Anthony, we have a large uh, viewer base of people that just love IGT games. Uh, Mark and myself are definitely one of those people. Is there anything that you would like to say to the viewers out there that just love these IGT games? Yeah, absolutely. So, so first off, thank you. Uh, and it, it's not easy to make these games. So we, we try really hard. Uh, we kind of sometimes lose our way, but we've, we're really focused on uh, the player and giving the player what they want. And a lot of times that means evolving our brands, uh, bringing back classics, uh, you know, it, playing with the math to get it just right, following trends of our competitors, because they do great games, as, as I'm sure you guys know. So we, like, we're really focused on that. We appreciate you playing. And I promise you the best stuff is yet to come. And another thing I want to say is uh, I've been doing this for almost 30 years and I wouldn't do it if I thought it hurt people. Like I, I got in this industry not knowing much about it. Grew up in Nevada and was like I didn't know really. They were there, casinos were there, slot machines were there, but I didn't know anything about them. Uh, fell in love with this industry. It's such a fun industry. Uh, I get to work with really talented people. I get to be creative. I get to use math. Uh, it's a great business, but it, it's it's for fun. It's for entertainment. We're very conscious of uh, gambling addiction. We support all of the responsible gaming initiatives. We talk to our design team to make sure we follow the rules because uh, we don't want to hurt people. That's not why we do this. I get so much utility and happiness when I walk through a casino floor and see someone playing a game I worked on, smiling and laughing and clapping. Like, that's why I do it, right? That That's my fulfillment. Um, it's it's definitely not about trying to hurt anybody or take people's money. And IGT as a company is very dedicated to that. All right, Anthony, so you mentioned that you just came out with the Diamond RS cabinet, super excited, but we know that's not the end of the story, right? There's got to be something else. So where, where do you where do you see the next evolution of IGT and the products that you're going to, and games that you're going to come out with? Like, what's, what's next for IGT? Yeah, well, we're constantly looking at a, short, mid, and long-term plan. Uh, so trying to figure out where are we going to be in five years? What's the industry going to look like? What are players going to want? Uh, so there's some really cool technologies we're trying to to figure out which ones are valuable to the players. Uh, I, I think there's some interesting ideas with connecting your phone with the game. Uh, we're still a little ways away from that, but uh, lots of really interesting ideas could come out of that. Again, we have to work with regulators. We have to work with casino partners to make sure we're we're following all the rules with that. But um, being able to maybe take your game and carry it away with you, come back, um, 
there's a, a lot of potential on things there. In the short term, I got a, a little secret for you guys. That I think Mark <laughs> might like. Uh, later this fall, we're going to have a new Top Dollar game coming out oh. called Top Dollar Grand. So it, it's oh, no. it's pretty cool. Wow. It's it, it's it's pretty can cool. Can I just give you my home address? And you can <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's one. And we're, wow. we're constantly, you know, every year we're coming out with a new cabinet, uh, great new titles. Uh, pros we're super proud of Prosperity Link. So we're going to make Prosperity Link into a big brand for IGT with additional versions of that. So just stay tuned. Lots of good stuff coming. All right, Anthony, I want to say thank you so much for spending the time today to sit down with us. Uh, we are big IGT fans. Most of our viewers are IGT fans also. And uh, we just think that it's amazing that we've been able to come together like this and to kind of break the mold a little bit, try to get a little bit more trans transparency out to the viewers that are actually playing your games. And that's what we're here for. We're trying to bridge that gap. And I think that this was um, a great opportunity to hear directly from somebody who has worked on a lot of the games that we talk about and play. And so thank you so much for your time. Uh, we hope this isn't the last, uh, but uh, we uh, we just, again, wanted to say thank you so much um, from Cowboy Slots, Brantley and Mark, and all of our viewers out there. Uh, thanks, thanks so much for doing this. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, even just getting to know you guys over the past few months, uh, truly a pleasure. We're, we're looking forward to a great partnership with Cowboy Slots. These guys really know what they're talking about. I've watched a lot of their videos, so uh, keep watching them and uh, play your IGT games and be safe out there. Thanks so much for watching. Check out these other videos and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more slot tips. It's always free. Visit RopeTheJackpot.com for free guides and a whole lot more. Catch you on the next episode.